Welcome to my channel guys. So in this video I'm going to be reviewing a pretty bizarre 2008 Japanese comedy drama Love Exposure. It is directed by Sion Sono. So if you are familiar with his work, you already know that you're in for a crazy ride whenever it comes to any of his movies and this one was definitely no exception. I've known about this movie for a long time but I've been kind of mentally preparing myself to watch it because the damn movie is almost four hours long like it clocks in at three minutes and 50 and 57 seconds so that's a pretty long time to commit to a movie okay so i was really like waiting for that day when i'm emotionally ready to sit down and commit to one movie for that long but I happen to be on vacation from work right now, everything is closed, movie theaters are closed, bookstores are closed. I can't really go anywhere so I figured since I'm stuck in the house on my vacation I might as well go ahead and commit to an almost 4 hour long movie, why the hell not? So I just finished watching this and I'm not even gonna lie, I am pretty emotionally exhausted right now. Not because the movie was all that draining. I actually think that Sion Solno's Forest of Love is a lot more draining than this emotionally. But I don't know. Like it just really took a toll on me. I am not sure if the movie needed to be quite that long. But then again maybe it did. Because if it wasn't I might have said that it was rushed or something. Because it does have a whole lot of shit going on. And maybe the only way to have all of that shit happen throughout the movie without being rushed as hell is to have it to be that damn long so maybe it did need to be long like that anyways i'm honestly having difficulty to even like explain what the hell the movie is about so i'm just gonna read it from imbd you know whenever i don't know how to explain the damn movie in my own words i would just read the plot from imbd because i trust them more than myself sometimes to put things into words okay so an imbd is described as a bizarre love triangle forms between a young catholic upskirt photographer a misandry girl and a manipulative cultist yeah i guess that's a way to describe this movie i wouldn't say that it's only about the love triangle between those three crazy ass characters but it's definitely a huge part of it so yeah let's get into those characters First, the main character, Yu, who is also part of this love triangle, obviously, he is this shy, quiet, kind of innocent-like guy that eventually becomes an upskirt photographer trying to please his Catholic priest father. Don't ask, just go on ahead and watch the movie to see how that happened because I don't even know how to explain that to make it make sense. So the other part of the love triangle is his love interest Yoko who is this high school girl that hates all men because of her father trying to sexually assault her but she falls for you not realizing that he is a man because when they first meet you is actually wearing drag pretending to be a character from a movie female prisoner scorpion once again don't ask because it's just a really long story to explain okay but it is worth mentioning that the main reason you fell for yoko is because he taught her to be the personification of virgin mary and then the third person in the love triangle is another very troubled girl named koi Kate. Koiki has also been abused by her father and that had turned her batshit crazy. And she is also part of this cult called the Church of Zero or the Zero Church. I forgot exactly how it went. And she has interest in you, but she goes at him through Yoko. All of that is extremely complicated to explain, to be honest. So those are the, our three main crazy ass characters. And there is like a bunch of supporting characters that are also crazy as hell. But those are our three main characters. And the movie mainly focuses on that love triangle between them. And a whole lot of craziness that's going on. And it's going to be definitely a lot of craziness. Now, because this movie is four hours long, just like I expected, it had its hit or miss moments. Like, there were times where I was really interested and really invested. There were almost also moments in there where I almost checked out. And not even going to lie, the beginning of the movie, 
was to me one of those moments where I almost checked out and almost turned the whole thing off. It starts pretty slow, but that wasn't my problem with the movie. I just wasn't really feeling the whole thing in the beginning about this teenage boy that becomes this perv following women around and taking abscord pictures of their panties. I just, like, it was just wasn't my type of a movie that I wanted to watch. Not even gonna lie, I wanted to turn it off at this point. I figured the targeted audience from this movie was probably horny, lonely men or something, or young teenage boys that would like to pick at women's panties or something. So I almost stopped watching it, but I stuck with it. And it took like a whole hour for this movie to get interesting for me but I was glad that I stuck to it because after it passed an hour mark it actually did get pretty interesting for me and I was actually very happy. After it passed the hour mark they did something here that I don't normally like when movies do but for this movie it actually worked perfectly for me. They switched the perspective in the movie for a little bit like they they switched from the character's use point of view and they gave the narration the movie is heavily like narrated in voiceover and they switched from use narration they gave the narration instead to Koike's character first and then to Yoko's characters and I'm not gonna lie I much more enjoyed this movie from those two girls points of view even though both of them was crazy as hell but it was just a lot more fun to me to watch and I found their characters to just be a lot more interesting than Yu's character. Then the movie went back to Yu's perspective again and I kind of started checking out again but then certain events happened and more events happened and more events happened and it just sucked me in, okay? Just like all the As I Say and Soul Knows movies that I've ever watched, this movie is a straight up train wreck but like you can't stop watching. There's a whole lot of shit happen, it's crazy and it's absolutely absurd, it's ridiculous, it doesn't make sense, you have to suspend your disbelief quite a lot to watch this and it gets like it goes places that are really messed up at times but it's impossible to start watching you just have to see what's going to happen next and one thing with this movie just like it is with all his other movies that it's completely unpredictable you could never like guess what's going to happen next which is really refreshing because so many movies have been done to death you know so many tropes so many plot lines and so many other movies that at times even though you are watching a new movie you can still easily tell what's gonna happen next you can predict things you can call things happening a mile away you definitely cannot call things with this movie you never know where the hell is gonna go what direction is gonna take so if anything gotta give this movie credit for not being boring and for being extremely unpredictable okay it is a pretty original piece of work i would say that a lot of people would find this movie offensive like I'm not even gonna lie I was triggered in the first hour of this movie like I said but a lot of people would also find it offensive for other reasons like I would say if you are like a religious person if you're like either Christian or Catholic or is that the same thing I'm not sure because I'm not religious like that but if you are like religious you might find this movie upset upsetting because it does have like a strong religious undertone to it. The main character is Yu's father, he's a Catholic priest, and religion is a huge part of Yu's character's life. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons that he becomes this pervy, obscure photographer is shockingly enough because of his and his father's religion. So I guess like religious people might be offended by this movie because at the time it almost seems like it's, it's mocking religion. Since I'm not religious, I didn't find that aspect of the movie offensive, but I can definitely see how people who are religious might find it offensive. So I'm just putting it out there. If you're Catholic or Christian or whatever, watch at your own risk. And it gets funny at times too, in a really perverse kind of way, I guess. The acting was all crazy over the top. Really had fun watching all of the actors. The characters were all interesting and definitely all had distinct personalities. Like, this is one of those movies where you definitely cannot say that the characters are flat or boring. They were all crazy as hell, but they were all very interesting to watch. And I would say that the characters in this movie do go through a whole lot of changes, so there's pretty good character development in here as well. And even, like, really minor characters in here stand out and all have different personalities and different things going on with them. It also has some surprisingly gory scenes in it. 
which I mean shouldn't even be all that surprising considering that it's a Silent Sono movie. I haven't seen a movie of his that wasn't gory to be honest, but considering that this movie was supposed to be like a romantic comedy drama, I honestly was not expecting to see the buckets of blood that eventually got spilled in this movie. And I was not expecting for it to get as violent as it got at times, but at the end of the day I can't complain. Overall, it was a pretty fun movie, but like I said, I wouldn't recommend it for people who are easily offended because it definitely does go places and definitely does crosses quite a few lines. It takes it there. I would probably recommend this strictly to this director's fans and for people that just like really bizarre and weird ass movies. I would rate this movie a 8 out of 10. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have seen this movie and what did you think about it. Let me know which Silent Sonos movie I should watch next for a review. Like this video if you enjoy my review. Subscribe to my channel. All that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Bye.